Good evening, Heavenbound family, and uh, or good morning, I should say, Heavenbound family, and all that are watching uh, on this Sunday morning, the 13th of June. Hope that you're getting ready to go out to God's house today and worship Him. Uh, two days ago, we started kind of a study concerning the prophecies of Christ in the Old Testament. We mentioned that there's two reasons, uh, or that there's... Uh, the reason why the Jewish nation has not accepted Christ, though Christ was born to the Jews, uh, is the reason that uh, in the Old Testament there were two strings of prophecy. First of all, there was the um, prophecy of Christ the coming King. And um, uh, we talked yesterday uh, about um, the various prophecies there in Isaiah. We talked um uh, about for that about the prophecies in Psalms, uh, both given prophecies of a kingly Messiah, which the Jews looked for, and which they were expecting. And when Christ didn't come to reign as king, they rejected him. The uh, second um, string of prophecies concerning Christ is the Messiah, is that of his suffering, and um, we uh, read in Isaiah. Uh, yesterday um, uh, of uh, his suffering there in chapter 50, 52, uh, and 53. Um, to uh, this morning, uh, let's uh, go to the book of Jeremiah. Really, um, I couldn't put my finger on any Jeremiah concerning the suffering king, but I found a number of uh, prophecies uh, in Jeremiah concerning the kingly uh, string of prophecies. So let me share those with you. And then there's a couple in Daniel and uh, one in Micah. And uh, the only suffering Messiah that I could find uh, in Jeremiah through Daniel was actually uh, Daniel 9.26. And we'll look at that in a moment. Right now, let's uh, look at Jeremiah why the Jews was looking for a kingly Messiah. And thus, when Christ did not come and set up his kingdom, uh, he, um, uh, they rejected him, and uh, consequently they crucified him. But let's notice uh, what some prophecies concerning. Um, we had mentioned there that one of the reasons that convinces us that the Bible is indeed the inspired, infallible, inerrant word of God is because of all of the fulfilled prophecies that are made concerning Jesus. Uh, tomorrow we'll look at uh, the ones in Isaiah or in Zechariah, which uh, uh, is uh, almost unbelievable. Uh, but uh, uh, right now, let's look at Jeremiah, a prophecy of Christ coming to reign as king, which he will do when he comes back and um, uh, sets up his earthly kingdom. In Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 5 says, Behold, the day cometh, saith the Lord, that I will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. Now, I remind you, David has been dead over 500, or at least 500 years by the time that Jeremiah writes this. It says, In his day, Judah shall be saved, and Israel shall dwell safely. And this is his name, whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. But the Lord liveth which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, that would be Russia, and from all countries whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land. Uh, that is a prophecy that was made roughly around um, uh, almost 600 years prior to uh, Christ's birth that was fulfilled in our lifetime. In May the 14th, 1948. Maybe I should say in my lifetime. Uh, but uh, I trust there'll be some maybe listening who uh, is old enough to remember when Israel, and if you were not old enough in that day, 
uh, nonetheless, you're familiar with the fact that Israel is now a powerful nation. According to uh, uh, World News Today, I believe it is, Israel is the sixth most powerful army on the face of the earth as far as military might is concerned. Another prophecy that was given um, by Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 30 in verses 7 through 9. He says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it, speaking about the tribulation period. Verse 8 says, For it shall come to pass in that day, saith the Lord of hosts, that I will break his yoke from off thy neck, and shall burst thy bonds, and strangers shall no more serve themselves of him, speaking of the Antichrist. Verse 9 says, But they shall serve the Lord their God, and David, remind you again, David has been dead now 500 years when Jeremiah writes, David their king, whom I will raise up unto them. And then if we just turn over to chapter 33 uh, of Jeremiah, in verses 14 through 16, says, Behold, the day comes, saith the Lord, that I will perform that good thing which I have promised unto the house of Israel and to the house of Judah. In those days and at that time will I cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David, and he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. In those days shall Judah be saved, and Jerusalem shall dwell safely. And this is the name wherewith she shall be called the Lord, our righteousness. Three different uh, places uh, in Jeremiah there where Jeremiah, uh, by the inspiration of God, is able to prophesy that uh, uh, Israel is going to be delivered from the Antichrist and so forth, and that um, uh, Christ will reign uh, in the person of King David there. Uh, and there's some question as to whether Christ will actually, Christ will certainly be the one in charge who will reign. But uh, it appears that he may raise up David to kindly serve as a regent king, a regent, regent <laughs> king under, um, under Christ there. In Daniel chapter 2 verse 44, it said, And in those days these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Daniel prophesying that in the last days God is going to raise up, or actually he prophesies that God is going to raise up four world uh, empires. Uh, they will be uh, Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome. And uh, then... Uh, he will raise up his own empire, which will be uh, the kingdom of heaven, wherein Christ will come during the tribulation period. In the tribulation period, destroy all the kings and will set up his own kingdom and will reign. In uh, Daniel chapter 7, in verses uh, uh, 13 and 14, uh, Daniel said, I saw in the night vision, and behold, one like the Son of Man came with the clouds of heaven and came to the Ancient of Days, that's God, and they brought him near, him being Christ, before him. And there was given him dominion and glory and a kingdom that all people, nations, and language should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away in his kingdom, that which shall not be destroyed. In other words, a prophecy of the fact that Christ is going to come and he is going to reign uh, throughout uh, the entire universe uh, uh, during his thousand year millennial reign. We have one uh, of suffering uh, found in Daniel chapter 9 verse 26. This is talking about again uh, when Christ suffers it says and after three score and two weeks, that is after 62 weeks, week being years, uh, uh, and um, after, uh, 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 let me rephrase that, a week in the Hebrew is 
heptap. It means seven. It's just like our 12 means a dozen. So there's going to be 62 weeks plus um, um, seven, which is going to be 69 weeks. That 69 will be times seven. Uh, the heptap, be, the wheat will be seven. And um, this is 483 uh, years from 444 BC. Uh, when uh, that starts to count under uh, under King Artaxerxes, when he gives Nehemiah permission to go back and build Jerusalem, um, will um, uh, pass. At that time, Christ is going to ride in uh, to Jerusalem on the donkey. There will be rejected as king, and um, then uh, there will be another seven-year period, which will be the seven years of tribulation, which is yet to come. And um, uh, so it says, And after three, after three scores in two weeks shall the Messiah be cut off. That is, talking about Christ during his lifetime. Uh, uh, this is a Palm Sunday, a uh, week before his crucifixion. He'll be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince, that is the Antichrist, that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood. This happened in 70 A.D. And under the end of the war, desolations are determined. And so uh, speaking of uh, the uh, suffering Messiah there, um, in Micah chapter 5, verse 2, Micah will prophesy that Jesus is going to be born in Bethlehem of Ephratah. And uh, the upper Ephratah is important because uh, there are two Bethlehems. And um, this one, uh, Bethlehem of Ephratah, is near Jerusalem. That's where Christ was born. When Micah prophesied that around 800 B.C., uh, uh, Bethlehem would have been just a tiny uh, uh, shop, if that much. And uh, certainly in a, no person would have guessed that the King of Kings would be born there, unless they were inspired to, write, do, to, to make such a prediction by God himself. In uh, 4 B.C., uh, Micah 5.2 was fulfilled. Christ was born in Bethlehem. And that in itself is amazing for Christ. A family that he was born to is from Nazareth, nearly 70 miles north of Bethlehem. God had to cause a world emperor to set up a tax that would bring Joseph to Bethlehem at that particular time. Uh, and so all of these are prophecies that God made. Some of them have already been fulfilled, such as Micah's prophecy there, and such as Daniel's uh, prophecy of his suffering there. Uh, some is yet to be fulfilled. But nonetheless, when we consider, as we'll see tomorrow in Zechariah, most of the prophecies there will already will have been fulfilled the night of the week of Christ's crucifixion. So just uh, sharing these with you to help you see the Bible is indeed the inspired word of God. For only through the uh, uh, power of God could these men have possibly known what was going to happen and especially the day and the place it would happen. Hey, this is Pastor Lur with a moment and a word again. This is uh, the Lord's Day. Go out and worship the Lord. It'll bless your pastor. It'll bless the people. You will be blessed, and God will bless all of us as a result of our worshiping him in spirit and truth tomorrow at God's house. I encourage you to come out and be blessed.